Old Jack Frost loves to give us anglers a tough time during these winter months. So I decided to give my bones a Blue Ridge break and head down Dixie Way for a bit. This is a gamble. I just kind of threw a dart at the map and was like, ah, let's go there. And it worked out. And that, oh, that makes it everything. Man. That's so cool. <laughs> Welcome to Georgia. Now I know what you might be thinking. North Georgia? What the heck, Mike? I know. I'll try and uh, explain everything as we get going, but I need to get geared up and on the river because it is already well into the afternoon and that sun, it's gonna be setting very, very soon. So let's get geared up and get after it. And I'll try and explain along the way. Yes, a bit more explanation is required. So being home for the holidays, home being the Midwest, I had a little extra time off and I was thinking about doing some adventuring. And I didn't really know where because the east was pretty cold, west under ice, and the north, that's a joke. So I set my sights on the southeast. I've never been east of Tennessee and I've never been south of Memphis, so I figured this would be a great opportunity to see a new part of the country and maybe chase some new trout. So we're gonna be spending the next few days hop hopping around the Blue Ridge Range in North Georgia. And we are sitting riverside on an absolute gem. I mean, this stream looks insane this is so cool i need to get these rods set up asap rocky because yeah it's time to catch some fish i just want one but a few would be really sweet so yeah let's get to it all right look at split we are rigged up time check is right at one o'clock so i'm looking at that sun we have a couple hours to fish and piece something together so Let's get this uh, let's get this dog and pony show going. Let's go. Oh, whoa. I just saw an otter. There's an otter over there. Wild. Okay, well I hate to already be making excuses, but uh, yeah, conditions aren't the best right now. I don't know this creek, but it looks like uh, there must have been some high water recently. I know in the Midwest we got some crazy weather patterns that ran through, and I'm assuming, yeah, the residuals hit up here, but a lot of leaves in the water, and you can kind of see a visible water line that shows that the water I mean, very recently was pretty high. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or <laughs> the otters that are uh, going and eating all the trout. I'm not sure. It's cool to see them though. That's really cool. Look who's back. I knew there were more than one, you little cheeky sons of guns. Hey, you guys eating the trout? Yeah, I see you. Well, it's good to keep those expectations low, especially on day one, if you can even call this day one. This is more the travel day. I had budgeted in just enough time, you know, if I was diligent in my drive and made it out of St. Louis in good time to come and fish this section. And I really just wanted to get my eyes on these kind of rivers, just kind of get a gauge on what they look like and, and how they fish. And today, a little tough. We had some uh, interesting conditions, let's just say, with a lot of leaves in the water, I'm assuming from some sort of rainstorm that happened here recently. And then, yeah, seeing the otter, those two things, that's kind of like the kiss of death. Having tough conditions as far as not knowing the, the stage of water levels, be it up or down, and then yeah, having a cheeky otter come through and just rustle up all the trout. And you know, I don't even, I don't even mind. The, uh, just seeing that otter was so cool. 
I mean, there ought to be otters in every single river, but when you're fishing it, it's not the best thing. So it's no big deal. But right now, I have, I have got to run and chase that sun. I gotta kind of strip down, get everything kind of cinched down, and we're gonna run off this ridge because I need to, well, I don't need to, but I would like to be driving out of here in the sun or with a little bit of light left because these, uh, these red dirt roads, man, they're no joke. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Oh, it's so cool to be in Georgia. But yeah, let's get that all figured out right now and yeah, try and find ourselves a little place to snoozy snooze tonight. That bittersweet feeling of an otter-induced skunk is significantly dulled down by the natural beauty of a new place. I always try my best to avoid slipping into what I consider culture shock, but I think the Blue Ridges were pulling me in tight because this place was so beautiful. We managed to make it back to the truck in no time flat, and we were racing down those forest roads as fast as we could. We had just enough light to make it up and over the next ridge to find a place to camp for tomorrow's adventure. Well, folks, welcome to the crib. We are truck camping tonight. We've made it to our access point for tomorrow's adventure, so I'm gonna get to snoozing, dreaming of trout, so that hopefully tomorrow we can get on our first Georgia trout. So, I'll see you in the morning. Alrighty folks, time check is just after 7.30. Kind of a late start here, but that, oh, that truck camping cocoon was so cozy. And it's kind of chilly still. I haven't seen the sun, but it's definitely sub 30s. It's gonna be kind of a chilly morning before that sun comes out, so yeah, no better time to get the hike on now and yeah, make our way down to Jack's River. That's where we're headed today, so let's get after it. The dim glow was growing quick and the rhythmic squish of our boots was going fast because we had no time to waste. As those boots mush matted down leaves, my mind brought back countless memories of watching various fly fishing videos all up and down the eastern United States. So. As the Georgia pines reached for the sky, touching that light, those deciduous skeletons were clattering in the air. And I gotta say, it was hard to believe I was here. I kind of felt like an imposter, but I was so ready to get out there and get after it. Well, we have made it to the Jacks River and it is time to get rigged up, maybe bundle back up, and hopefully, hopefully get on that first Georgia trout. So, Let's get after it. Now, something as simple as layer management is absolutely key wherever you're fishing during these winter months. In just the time it took to get rigged up, which wasn't that long, I could already feel the morning chill creeping back in and my fingers were getting cold. The first few hours of our day were spent hole hopping up the river. And for how remote this section was, I was having a tough time getting away from signs of past angling accidents. So pressing further upstream seemed to be the best course of action at the time. However, the more we pushed, the river grew wider and it seemed to have a lot less structure. It wasn't looking nearly as fishy. Plus, the ridges on either side, they were sloped sharp and the foliage looked super, super dense. So I was kind of getting myself into a hole and I needed to get out quick or I was going to be trapped. So far, we have been grinding. I just got in a pretty big tussle with this ridge and all the kudzu and thorn bushes in it and I'm all bloody and it's just a mess. It's just, it's very frustrating so far. The research that I've done kind of let me down in a way. This Jacks River is a lot bigger than what I thought and I haven't even seen a fish yet. They say that this is the wild trout like creme de la creme and so far it's just not happening. So I'm gonna go upstream just a little more. I refound the actual trail that's another thing, these trails, oh man, they are barely trails. It's hard to follow them. You gotta be really careful on which, uh, which way you go because <laughs> you can get lost quick. But yeah, let's, uh, let's rally, try and uh, kill this sweat and catch some dank fish at least. Just, just one, just need one. This is what we're dealing with, folks. This is the main Jack's Creek Trail, and it is an absolute disaster. I don't know if this is recent 
tree fall or what, but this is, God bless America, this is having, having some uh, bad effects on our trip. This is making, well, traveling very hard and then, yeah, logistics of getting from point A to point B, planning out places even harder. So, damn, this day is just turning into a mess. I'm turning around and heading back towards the trailhead. I could feel the frustration starting to mount as we doubled back towards the trailhead. This right here was a prime time example of how certain things can look good on paper versus how they actually are when your boots are on the trail experiencing them. But let my lapse in diligence be a lesson because no matter what the odds are, you should always be ready for that fish. Always on the golden boy. Don't have my net, I don't have my net. Holy shit. Folks, that's it right there. That is it right there. That's our first Georgia trout. Yeehaw! Oh my god. Well, this is what they look like, folks. That is a true blue Georgia beauty. That is wild as the day is long, and I am so relieved we finally found ourselves. Blue Ridge trout through and through. God, oh man, I cannot tell you how happy this makes me. This is amazing. Well, what do you say, little guy? You ready to get back? <laughs> Let's send him back. See you, buddy. Thank you. Alrighty, our first fish is back in the drink, safe and sound. And I know there's a few of you folks out there who have the same sentiment. When when I'm not catching fish, it's almost like fish don't even exist. I, I lose all faith in fish ever existing. And so I had kind of broken down my rods and I had packed up my net because I was running through some really nasty stuff, some real thick, thick stuff. And I was not ready to land that fish. I think it's important to always stay diligent and be uh, as ready as possible because right there I could have easily lost that fish because my net was nowhere to be seen and I mean I had to throw my stuff on the bank and scoop him up. It was a mess. But we got him. So uh, silver lining there is that uh, yeah we got the fish but the lesson to be learned is to always be ready to catch that fish. So. That is good, that is great. No, that, that's amazing. I'm so happy that we could have actually got this fish. And I think now we're gonna jump back up on the trail and we're gonna go down to Jack's Fall because my my stomach, it's, it's very hungry and I wanna see this thing. It's rumored to be one of the bigger waterfalls here in Georgia and we're so close, so why not, you know? <laughs> so let's go. It is truly amazing how just one fish can completely turn a day around. It was the kick in the pants we needed to completely forget about all those thorns in our hands and the fishless miles under our boots. So once we actually made it to the falls, that cliff bar never tasted sweeter. But we couldn't get too comfortable because we still had fish to catch. The afternoon was moving well into the evening and we needed to capitalize on this evening bite. Yes, yes, yeah, let's go. <laughs> On the top fly, baby. I hope y'all can hear me, it's super loud right here. My original plan was just to come to the waterfall, have a little, little lunch and maybe a drink and kind of chill out. I didn't expect to fish it, but when I got here, this pool right here looks so juicy. I'm talking like your mama made it. It looks so good. So I came down here and we hooked that one and we missed him and it was all, oh, it was a nightmare. I was so sad. And just a couple casts later, we got this guy. He, he is so gorgeous. Let's, let's try and get a look at this guy. There we go, folks. That is one Jack's River gem right there. Just wild as the day is long and just so gorgeous, man. Oh, and just like that, he is back. Let's go, man. That is so sick. That is so so nice. That makes me feel so much better about today. It's been kind of a grinder. I'll be honest, I got a little bit frustrated there in the mid-morning to afternoon. I figured this day was a wash, but that right there, that's, oh, it's our second bow of the day. That's so good. 
All right, no more fish out of there. We did have a few more bites, so I think it might be worth talking about the rig. We're rocking a double nymph setup under a New Zealand strike indicator. And we had one going off of that guy. And that's just a kind of a Copper John variant, more on the gold side of the Copper John. And then what we got that last fish on was, again, I call this a little scrimp. It's a scud, sow bug, just very general buggy pattern. I've got the video on how to tie it linked down below, so go check out the little scrimp. And yeah, under the New Zealand strike indicator, and that's kind of the rig that we got these fish on. Well, hooked and then actually caught one. But man, this, this waterfall, this is so dang cool. I'm really liking this. Ooh, that was a fish. Rats. Yes! Yeah! Absolutely perfect! Well, that right there is another excellent ooh, fast water fish, man. They are sitting so tight to these really deep plunge pools. It's, it's very interesting fishing this water. It's new and uh, somewhat confusing, but we're getting it. Just a little piece by piece, we're getting it. <laughs> it's so awesome. We have harassed this guy long enough. Well, see him back. Thank you, sir. Get back to your riffle, man. Well, it looks like our road is ending here. That's way too treacherous and it's way too late in the day for us to go any further down. So let's hike back upstream. Very nice. Looks like he's been caught before. All right. Thank you, sir. There we go, eight ball corner pocket, baby. Another beautiful fish. I just couldn't help myself. I know that sun's going down, but man, I wanted to come back to the waterfall and just try a couple more casts. This very well could be our last fish of the day, so that's why I want to show you guys, because damn, it is so gorgeous. Okay, upon further inspection, this fish has a hook in its face. Check this out. Are y'all seeing that? That is so wild. Let's Dr. Mike get up real quick and see if we can't get that out. That is insane. That is a massive hook. Oh my God. And someone just uh, must have broken off or something. Golly Jones. Oh, imagine having that in your face. That is gnarled. Post off, that's still one beautiful, beautiful fish. These wild Georgia. Wild Georgia bows got something going on. I'm digging it, man. This is so nice. Yeah, it's sweet. Well, let's uh, get this cheeky boy back. Well, see you, sir. Time check is just after 3.15, and that sun keeps going up and over the ridges, and as it kind of hits pockets, we'll get a little bit of warmth, but otherwise, it's really starting to cool off. Getting three fish out of this one waterfall is so cool. I mean, that's that kind of is making my day. That's so amazing. Let's kind of get things packed up, and that's what this hike out, man. We got a long way to go, but after catching all those fish, I think I can be more than happy with the price to pay, the, the brass taxes I like to call it. So yeah, this is sweet, man. Let's uh, get this going.
Oh my God. The camera never does something like this justice, but that, holy cow. We're at the bushwhack and we probably cut a mile off our hike, but God bless America. Whew. That was touch and go. Okay, let's get to hiking. As we hustled down the trail, I couldn't help but think about how much these winter adventures make me miss long summer days. Having to hike out of a location at 4 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. is an absolute drag. But I will say, I'm glad the Southern Appalachians stay warm enough well into the winter to even allow us to have something like this. Well, folks, we have made it. If you can see that, the sun is setting and boom, there's our truck. What a day. 13 miles later and our Jack's Creek adventure is done. Excuse me, Jack's River. Seeing the falls is amazing, but I can't, I can't get ahead of myself because the day is not over. We still have to make our way to Blue Ridge and that's gonna be a long drive through the woods. So we need to do that before the sun gets down. And yeah, we've got a sweet treat waiting for us there. So stick with. With just a sliver of light left in the air, all we needed was a PBJ and a damn fine podcast. And we we're able to get up and off of the mountain in no time, hit that blacktop and make it to Blue Ridge with time to spare. I told you we had a sweet treat. This right here is our Airbnb for the moment. This is gonna be our base of operations while we're here in Blue Ridge. And yeah, can't wait to get in there and get a shower and maybe some bed. This is, oh, this is a luxury. Let's get in here. Alrighty, all our stuff is in and I'm gonna do a quick little tour here of this absolutely beautiful cabin. This is so nice. I can't, I can't gas this up enough, but as you can see, the living room, we got the kitchen. That is so flipping nice. And here we've got the main bedroom. This really sweet bathroom. Holy cow. And my bum butt. Yeah, there we go. Good stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, this is just so stinking nice. This is going to be the perfect place to kind of base my operations because I'm going to be in and around the Blue Ridge area for the next few days. And yeah, I'm gonna have an absolutely beautiful place to come back to, kind of rest the bones a bit, shower, take a nice long snooze. So that's about kind of where I'm at right now. I need to do all of those things because it's been a long few days on the road and uh, yeah, I'm ready. So folks, before I scoot, thank you so much for sticking around today. This was kind of a grinder session, turned up a little bit towards the end, made it happen and now we are just absolutely just blessed with this really sweet Airbnb. So folks, I just gotta say, for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, consider it. I've been trying to put out content like this at least once a week, and you know, two if I'm really feeling lucky. But yeah, it's amazing to see how quick this kind of, I don't know, this channel's growing. It's going so, so well and growing so fast, and I have you guys to thank for that. So of course, thank you. And, on top of that, we've got the website, we've got the Discord, Instagram, Patreon, everything. Your support seriously means the world, so go check out all those. The more you know, stuff like Patreon is uh, used, then I can come and do cool stuff like this, and you guys are helping with that. So it's, uh, it's so cool to see. And the last huge free fat shout out before I scoot is to the folks here at this Airbnb. I've got all their information listed down below. So when you come to Blue Ridge, you gotta check them out. They have such a nice pad and you'll see it throughout the week. So this might be the first time you're hearing it, but it certainly won't be the last. So folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in the Blue Ridge Mountains or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. Well folks, good morning from Blue Ridge. I'm here in the Airbnb. We've still got a couple hours before that sun comes up, so I decided it'd be a good idea to kind of get up, get prepped. I'm gonna look at Onyx, go over some waypoints real quick while I sit my morning Joe and yeah, kind of enjoy this space a little bit more before we go back out to the frigid waters and try and hunt them trout. So stick with, stay tuned. We will be we'll be up and going here in just a bit. All right, the Airbnb is locked up and we're ready for day two, well, official day two here in Georgia. 
pretty chilly morning, but luckily the drive is gonna be super quick because we're, we're right by the river, which is so nice. So, no talking, let's hit the road. It seemed as though most of the Blue Ridge area was still very much asleep, waiting on the warmth of that sun to try and warm up the sky and burn off that frost because it was a chilly morning. But with the excitement of unfamiliar roads pulling my truck along the way, we managed to make it to our first stream in no time flat. And no sooner had the eagle landed, we hit the ground running and got suited up, ready for today's adventure. I was really excited to see what this Blue Ridge area had to offer as far as trout. Well, here we go, back on the grind. Now, today is a little bit of a departure from yesterday's adventure. This is a really awesome stream that parallels the road. So, we aren't ever really too far from the truck. As you can see, it's back there, but I've decided to park ahead of where I wanted to fish and fish up to it. Number one, just so that, yeah, we don't have to hike back, but number two, so that we can use this morning hike to kind of get our blood pumping, because it is a chilly, chilly morning. I think it said like 28 degrees when I got here, 29, something like that. So it's a good way to kind of get the blood pumping, get everything moving again before you actually get into the freezing cold water and start fishing. So a little trick, a little tip of the trade, I suppose. But yeah, we're well on our way and we'll jump in here in a sec. Okay, mark it down. First fall of the day, very nice. Ow. Huh. This is good. go might be a little hard to hear me right here it's kind of loud with the waterfall but this is our first fish of the morning and it's a dimey dime just peach it's an absolute peach I've heard good things about these Georgia rainbows but man this is an absolute gem it's so beautiful okay we're ready to uh, send this guy back Getting on that first fish was a huge relief, but the further upstream we moved, I was noticing a nasty trend. And I'm sure you guys see it too, but it seemed like every bend, there was a new log jam or a massive lay down that made travel so hard. So we were only able to catch one more fish in this section, a little beautiful guy, but still, we were really strapped for time trying to maneuver this creek and get to where we needed to go. Now we did manage to get a fish out of there, but we did find somebody's dry dropper rig. That thing is nice. Those are two fresh, fresh flies too. They went up in the tree very long. That's a dub, I'll take that every day of the week. <laughs> Alrighty, righty, my Onyx is showing me we are almost back at the truck. I think I'm just gonna cut my losses here, maybe find a new section. We've got a lot of river to fish, and I don't think there's many people here, so we might as well explore, and yeah, I mean, this section did us good. Got the skunk off at least, so yeah, let's head back to the truck. Hole hopping from spot to spot is super easy on this creek. The road is right there. But this is kind of a double-edged sword because as easy as I can access different spots, so can every other angler in North Georgia. So as we moved on to our second section here, I was kind of scratching my head again. I was wondering, man, why is all this really nice water not producing any fish? And as I was kind of putting the puzzle pieces together, I figured with how easy it was to access, man, these fish must see a lot of flies in a given year. So there was no doubt in my mind we were going after some very pressured trout. But I wasn't going to let that stop us because I knew there'd be fish in here. We just had to keep the grind going.
Yes, finally. Good lord. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a dolled up Doughboy Bow Boy, man. That is one pretty trout. Ah, that's what I like to see, man. Are you ready to go back? I think he's ready. Tell you. Alrighty, it's been kind of tough getting on a bite. We're not getting a consistent look at either of our setups right now, so I'm, I'm not gonna talk about it just yet. I wanna get a little bit more established and actually start catching fish before we, yeah, break down the rod and reel setup and the flies we're using. Right now, it's kind of a, yeah, learning process, learning curve, trying to figure out these fish. Well, we are back at the truck, the good old mule. And it might seem like we've kind of had a lackluster morning. We've gotten on four fish, three or four fish. And hey, I'm so happy with that because kind of putting it in perspective, at this time yesterday, I still hadn't caught a fish and I was, I was fuming about it. But today's different. Things are a little slow, but learning a new river in a new state, I'm just happy we caught one, let alone the few that we have. So fingers crossed as this afternoon kind of rolls into evening, things warm up, the fish get more active, and yeah, we can catch a few more. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hop in the truck, take a quick lunch break as I'm rolling on up, and we're gonna head towards the top of this watershed because where on the stream is that there are brookies at the top. And I would love to hold a Southern Appalachian brook trout. That would be like, probably the biggest goal checked off my list for this kind of trip and speaking of this kind of trip as i was making my way upstream i was thinking to myself i'm like man the patreon folk are like seriously the best and i try my best to thank you guys from you know words and texts at the end of every video kind of making a running list of all the people who have you know invested in fly all season and it, it, it kind of gets my gets my goat because I don't feel like that text does justice. You know, I try and put out the extra content as a thank you, but for real, for real, I just have to thank you guys so much, like here and now, because this would not have been possible. This entire trip would not have been possible without you. It has helped me, you know, get lodging, gas, food, like making this trip feasible to where I can, yeah, I can, if I have the time, I can make a big effort to go and see a new part of the country and try and catch the fish that are swimming in their rivers, man. It's just, it gets me so jacked up and it's it's just so cool that there's folks out there who, yeah, wanna see more of this. It's just, it's the best. And again, you Patreon folk, thank you so much. But <laughs> enough rambling for me. Let's get in the truck and start heading upstream. All right, time check is just after one o'clock. So we still have plenty of daylight to make something happen. I've scrambled, I've moved back down to the main section of the river, no more tributaries. And it looks like there's some waterfalls up the road, but there was no good access. So I had to park a little bit further down. So we're gonna walk up, try and fish those waterfalls and maybe there's fish underneath them. I don't know, kind of, uh, yeah, last ditch effort here, let's go. You know, I was a little upset that the tributaries were just so busy because I was looking forward to getting on some brookies or at least trying. But as we made our way down to the third section of the stream, I was convinced we were going to find some fish. A lot of deep runs, a lot of deep pools, but again, there just didn't seem to be any trout sitting where I thought they would be sitting. So, kept on moving upstream and surprisingly found some fish in shallower water. Oh my gosh. Oh, this afternoon has been a Mega Mondo Grinder Deluxe. It has been hard. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but the fish are being very fickle. But this guy gave me quite the surprise. He came up on our dry fly. Not just any dry fly, it was our adjustable. I'll show you that in a second. Let's get you a look at this guy. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a North Georgia gem. Woo! And he's flopping around. I think he's ready to get back. See ya, thank you. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's a little fish. We needed something. We need to get something going this afternoon. Let me uh, 
Let me show you this cheeky rig. For those of you out there like myself that enjoy using a dry dropper rig, well, let me tell you, I've got some good news for you. For those of you who have heard this spiel before, I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna go on it again because I think it's important. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is the adjustable dry dropper. Yeah, you guys seeing that? Up and down the line, just like, pretty much like a New Zealand strike indicator. But what I've done is I've kind of innovated, I suppose, a way to use an adjustable dry dropper so you can really manipulate that depth and yeah, get down to those fish if and when you need to, but also, just like that fella, catch them on top without it sliding and losing them, blah -de blah -de blah If you guys haven't seen it yet, go check it out. I've got it all linked down below, so yeah, show you how to tie it, show you how to rig it, it's all in that video. But what's also kind of cool, a little nugget, is that I recently did a fly tying video on this sexy little number right here. So it's double parachute, crazy legs, ant hopper, beetle, whatever you want to call it, it's a terrestrial, and it kicks ass. So. Gosh, man, I, today has just been a grinder grind, but I'm glad we got that one. So let's uh, wrap this up and keep moving upstream. Well, we've been grinding all day, and I, I keep scratching my head. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I, I don't know what possibly they couldn't like about what I'm throwing, but it might not be what I'm throwing. I think I finally figured it out. I was rooting around in some trees over there and I found this. The brown trout chums sunglasses holder. I know the reason I'm not catching fish because this stream is for real trout bros, not some dingus like me. I am not even close to qualified to be on a stream like this. I don't even have chums. Well, I guess I do now. <laughs> but for real, it seems like this, uh, this creek is quite popular, not exactly a secret, so. I think uh, the fish that we're getting, I'm definitely, definitely thankful for it because it's, it's kind of a pressured environment from the looks of it. So <laughs> I'm gonna stow these chums away. I think it's time to head back to the truck. So I think this is gonna be back to the drawing board number eight or nine. We've had a lot of uh, rework sessions on this trip today, but I will say I'm not too, uh, I'm not too terribly upset. Just being in a new place is awesome. But what I will say is that it's nothing like what I had read or what I had seen. So take that as fair warning before you go jumping into the deep end on a trip like this. It's not always going to be what you expect. So that's kind of prime time what we're running into today. Kind of what we saw yesterday. And yeah, it's just time to uh, keep turning those wheels, try and find a plan B. Might involve finding a new river as the sun keeps going down. <laughs> I don't know yet. We'll figure it out on the way. Well, would you look at that? That is one sopping wet arm and I can feel it down all the way on my left side toes. We just dunked ourselves and you know, I, Today's been a grind, and that's just the that's just the grimy cherry on top. But we'll only give this a few few couple runs. My arms already starting to get cold, so I'm not too interested in dicking around with this. So, oh, can't say we didn't try, you know. My God, no freaking way. This could possibly be the biggest Hail Mary ever. Oh my God, I cannot believe we just did that. Well, one half of my body is completely numb, but we managed to do it. Cold hands doesn't matter. That is the Hail Mary trout we were looking for. I, I did not expect to get a fish. I'll be completely honest with you. That is hilarious. I cannot believe we did it. Thank you, Mr. Stalker Rainbow, you saved my hide. Oh my gosh. That's uh, I don't know, you can't write that stuff. That's fantastic. I think it's uh, safe to say we've had him out long enough. Time to get him back. All right, buddy. See ya. Thank you, come again. It absolutely blows my mind, but in that first creek we were fishing, I had zero looks on what I consider my bread and butter. 
that being a double nymph setup under a New Zealand strike indicator. So I've got my collared copper john and then a normal copper john and that's what he ate underneath a deep, deep New Zealand strike indicator and then that big deep riffle, that's where he bit. I don't know what they do here. I have almost zero clue about this river, anything, you know, with regards to stocking wild, you know, fish numbers. I don't know, this is a gamble. I just kind of threw a dart at the map and was like, ah, let's go there. And it worked out and that, oh, that makes it everything, man. That's so cool. <laughs> of course, I had to try at least a few more casts at this spot. But with the evening light coming in quick, I figured we didn't need to press our luck anymore. My entire left side was freezing cold and the fish just weren't happening. So I waved the white flag and hightailed it back to the truck and back on those same unfamiliar roads from earlier this morning. My body was aching and we had a lot to unpack. So I was quite eager to make it back to the Airbnb and sit down and chill for a bit. And we are back safe and sound, warm and dry in the Hidden Creek Airbnb. It is so nice to be sitting in front of the fire and kind of, yeah, going over, digesting and then processing everything that happened today. And today was a very, very busy day in Blue Ridge. So kind of breaking down our streams, I'd only plan on hitting one and that was the Noon Tutla. So, Again, forgive my pronunciations, they're probably gonna be so garbage, but this new Trout Law was supposedly the, the creme de la creme, the, the top tier freestone here in Georgia. I had done my research, I figured, okay, everything checked out, saw a couple videos, I'm like, eh, okay, let's give it a try. And pretty much from sun up to sundown, we grinded so hard. And I noticed, it, again, it's always that thing where the, the research doesn't really kind of stack up to what you see in person. And it's, oh, it's always kind of frustrating, but what it seemed to, to, to be, or what seemed to have happened is that there was either storms or some sort of something had come through and knocked down so many trees. So be it the hemlocks or the hickories, the oaks, the pines, there was so much deadfall. So even just maneuvering the water itself was so difficult. It was like running an obstacle course every time you wanted to move holes. And so on top of having to climb over things, you had to keep your balance so tough. I mean, I've done Western Freestones a lot. I know what it feels like, but these Freestones are so slippery. I'm like doing the herky jerky, trying not to just fall on my butt. But on top of that, it also seemed like this stream got a lot of pressure. I mean, I saw on a Tuesday, so many cars. I mean, I guess I shouldn't call the kettle black because I'm there, but it just seems odd that there's so many people on a weekday going to this place. And then I'm like, oh man, what about on the weekends? And so, you know, you see the Christmas trees full of flies and you see like little bips and bops of uh, angler apparel and maybe some gear strewn about. And then of course the well-maintained paths. It's just like, man, I can't imagine this place uh, yeah, gets a, gets a rest or a reprieve. So I'm thinking that that might have not been the best decision. You know me, I like to go kind of hard and go back country, kind of like the Jack's River experience. I mean, that was so way, like way, way in the back. And I like that stuff. But this with the road next to it, it seemed pretty easily accessible. But regardless, we caught fish. I'm happy with that. Taking those beautiful bows home. I mean, that's a prize in and of itself. And for our first time being on that creek, again, just check that box off, that's another win. But the fourth quarter, kind of Hail Mary, just bombed down to the end zone, going to the Toka River, I believe. Uh, yeah, the Toka. And just finding a random access point, going to the, the overhanging bridge and sending it. I mean, on top of falling in, I mean, that I was, I was convinced like, okay, this is insult to injury, our day is over, but getting him, boom, just minutes after, that was, that was fantastic. And yeah, it's a stalker bow, but it just, it makes me feel so good that I could have gone to a random river, looked at a couple different, you know, structure points and been like, I'm gonna go there. And boom, you go there, you catch a fish as the sun's going down, fourth quarter whistle blows and the game is over. And that's, 
That's a TD, baby. That's a big dub. So, that's kind of the synopsis of the day. But that leaves me at kind of a crossroads because all the spots that I've gone to so far, the ones that you've seen, the ones you even haven't seen, though, those were all my plans A, B, C, and D. And I'm not so convinced that I want to spend the last half of this trip kind of doubling back to those that we've already seen. I, mean, I, I don't know uh, how much I like them. So going forward, we've got two more days left, Wednesday and Thursday. Ideally, I'd like to make my way back north a little bit because this is actually our last night in the Airbnb. I only wanted to kind of make a quick like interim stay to kind of, uh, yeah, help <laughs> that in-between period of uh, the truck camping excursion. So, like I said, last night here, I'm gonna do some research tonight though. So, the videos that you'll see tomorrow probably, are gonna, or from tomorrow probably, are gonna be new spots, new research, gonna really put my nose to the grindstone and try and figure something else out because I think, I think Blue Ridge and then Northern Georgia in general has some amazing opportunities and I wanna go seek them out. So with that folks, I'm gonna kinda wrap up this day with a nice bow by just saying thank you so much for sticking around for these videos. It is, uh, yeah, it's kind of a grind, but this is why I do this. This is why I like to go explore because you can go to the same rivers, you can go to the places that you know that are familiar, and you can maybe find success, but that, oh, that drive to explore, that burn for adventure, it just, it gets me up, it gets me out, and it gets me to these cool places and seeing, yeah, like a completely different part of the country that I've never seen before, that gets me so jazzed up different way of life, a different scenery, different out, you know, flora and fauna and just everything about it all kind of revolving around this, you know, this trout thing. It just, it gets me so jazzed. And so all you guys' support, be it on YouTube, the Patreon, Instagram, even like places like the Discord and the website, it, it, it all means the world to me. And, and the reason I'm kind of doing this is because there's monetary reasons that I can come and make a silly trip like this. So again, thank you so very much. And as we're going down the list of thank yous, I gotta give a just a giant thank you to the host here at this Airbnb. I mean, you never know what to expect. I mean, you can look at the pictures and you can you know, talk back and forth with the hosts, but getting here, I mean, this is amazing. I was just looking for a warm roof to kind of Again, bookend those uh, <laughs> those truck camping excursions, but this is like luxury. The fireplace, the coffee bar, the kitchen, the living, oh, and everything. That the shower. It's this is so nice. Now I think it's meant to be like a couple's retreat. It's tucked away way back, and it's just got every amenity you could even believe. And, we're not even using it to its full ex like fullest extent, which I, I kind of feel bad about, but you know, what can I say? I'm here <laughs> in the mornings and in the evenings. But if you're looking for a place to stay in Blue Ridge, I would highly, highly, highly recommend checking this place out. I get all the information linked down below. And just to know that they helped fly all season out, I mean, that should be reason enough for you to check it out as well. And it'd be a perfect place to take, you know, a couple's retreat, maybe one or two people on a fishing trip. It's There's a lot to offer here and it's prime locale. I mean, we're talking heart of Blue Ridge. So folks, stay with me here. Bear with me, we're almost done. Gotta give, you know, the the biggest freeze fattest shout outs to the Dry Fly Society, Hex and Ant. They, again, they're supporting fly all season. So go check them out. I've got all my QR codes listed down below. So. If you're interested in any of their gear that you see me using, I've got a promo code, go check it out. So the more you use that code, it helps them and it helps me. So again, thank you. And finally, folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in the Blue Ridge Mountains sitting next to a warm fire or in your backyard, I sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.
All right, it is our last morning here at Hidden Creek, and I'm kind of getting packed up, ready for our departure. Got kind of a game plan for today, but we're gonna start making our way back north. So we're in Blue Ridge right now. I'm gonna try and make my way towards the Tennessee border by, well, the end of today. So I'm gonna kind of hopscotch my way through. Got a couple places I wanna check out, but yeah, we've got a decent game plan. Hopefully, hopefully we can get on some fish. I mean, it's December, fishing's gonna be tough. I should. I should have known better, but regardless, hopes are high. I'm feeling good, showered, coffee. I mean, the full luxury experience. So again, huge shout out to Hidden Creek. We're gonna get uh, yeah, packed up here. Everything's nice and dry, and yeah, we'll be on the road here in a sec, so let's go. And we were met with yet another chilly morning here in Georgia. I had barely hit the main road and the night's frost still clung tight to my windshield. But again, alone on these roads, we made great time to a small blue line that I had researched last night. So I was hoping for better results here. But I will say, once we made it down to the creek itself, things looked pretty tight. But I will give it this, it did look fishy. So we marched our way upstream and began prospecting along the way. Now knowing nothing about this stream, this is a bit of a gamble, but we did just hook a little tiny trout about that big. I could see he looked like a rainbow trout, but he came off before I got him to the hand. So we at least know that there's trout in this creek. That's a good sign, I suppose. So maybe the next one we can get is a uh, more adult size. Fingers crossed. Well, at this point, it's almost comical how much I fall on this trip. The waiting here is uh, a little different, I'll just say that. <laughs> well, we have given the stream just about an hour. Time check is just after 9.30, so about an hour and a half. Had two bites, one on the dry and one on the drop. Couldn't get the one on the drop to get to the net, but I know they're wild trout in here. But chasing these blue lines, it can be kind of a bust system because all this deadfall, I don't know if it's from the recent storms or what, but it makes moving so treacherous. So on top of slippery rocks helping you fall, it's just, it's an obstacle course trying to get up and over all the different log jams and stuff. So I don't want to risk that anymore. I think I might double back and hit some more popular streams and just keep my fingers crossed that there's no one there or there's not a whole lot of pressure just now. So let's uh, keep this ball rolling. I hope y'all are starting to notice a trend here because I'm gonna be having nightmares about down trees for the next month. It was insane, but we made our way back to the truck and no sooner we were back on the road and headed to spot number two on the day. Now, the second spot, luckily for us, was pretty close. So the drive gave us just enough time to warm up, kind of collect the thoughts a bit more and make it to the best access point on this creek. And no sooner we were there, we were on the river, casting away. We may not be catching fish, but we're catching flies. Like you can't write this stuff. Look at that. A nice stimmy, just caught, hooked a hook, broke it off of a tree up there, I guess. Man, that is so crazy. It's a good looking stimmy, but what are the odds of that? That's insane. Thank you to whoever lost that. Just an absolute dimey dime. Well, I hate to be that guy, but I think I might have to move spots again. This Cooper's Creek, whatever this is, it seems like uh, it seems like a trout park from back home, a very empty trout park. I, I don't I don't understand it. You know, the the water looks good, everything seems right. You know, the access is a bit easy, so I understand. But I'm seeing corn cans all over the place. I'm seeing hooks and bobbers in the trees like I would if I was you know, back home in Missouri fishing like trout parks. And so I would, I'd be less frustrated if I just saw fish. Like I'm not even seeing fish and I've got damn eagle eyes. I can see those suckers from miles away. I'm not even, I'm not even seeing myself spooking fish. So it, it is starting to build frustration that, okay, plan A, B, and C out the drain. And then we're on like 
X, Y, and Z right now. This is probably plan Z. And I'm thinking it might just be one of those things where we have to just kind of call today a loss and head to the mountains, go back to where we were catching fish at the beginning of this trip when I thought, <laughs> when I thought five fish was a rough day. I'd, I'd pay for a fish right now. So yeah, rods are broken down again. I think we might strip the waders and just send it back to the mountains. The afternoon was rolling in strong and I was being the biggest sourpuss this side of the Chattahoochee. Let me tell you folks, I was pissed. But with a little bit of disdain, I bid Blue Ridge a farewell and booked it back to the mountains and back to another random blue line. That feels amazing. I don't care how small he is, this little fish just absolutely made all the driving worth it. Oh, buddy, no. See you. Okay, so we just drove a couple counties over, uh, heading back west towards Missouri, I mean, relatively. And uh, yeah, found this random blue line, and I, I mean, I don't even know the name. So it's cool that it's got fish, and fingers crossed, as we keep moving up, we can maybe start piecing something together, maybe some size. Big, you know what, beggars can't be choosing, so I'm not even gonna complain. That's so sweet. We can actually use the net. Now that right there is one healthy, wild Georgia bow. Is it, I don't understand what the hell happened. We went an hour east, maybe a little bit north, and we have just found ourselves a pretty nice blue line. That's two fish in two runs. Like I haven't really gone up that far. Oh my gosh, it's just nice to see that there's fish where fish usually are, you know? I feel like I've been chasing like phantom trout for the past, ugh, like, 12 hours, man. It's so nice getting on some fish, and I know they're small. Don't even give me that. This is, oh, I don't even care. Is this is the best? I'm. Oh my gosh, my spirits are lifted. All right, let's send this guy back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Oh, sorry, buddy. Oh, you're fine. You folks at home know exactly how I'm feeling right now. It is. Unbelievable how a prime time winter grind can be melted away by just a few small fish. After a day like today, those make, they make it all worth it, man. Yes! Beautiful fish! Look at you! Now I'm sure a lot of you out there from the Appalachians and Georgia alike are probably probably face palming right now thinking, Mike, you're dumb. Number one, why are you fishing in the winter? And number two, this isn't exactly a nice fish. But for this trip, for this day, I am over the moon. This this is our best fish and it's so beautiful. This is kind of what you want when you come to the yeah, the Blue Ridge Mountains, baby. Got them rosy reds on him, man. That's a nice fish. He's got that super thick red line and the ruby fins. I mean, that's a that's a beauty fish right there. Gotta love it. So let's uh, see this boy back. Thank you, sir. See ya. And just like that, fourth quarter, we're finding some fish. This Man, this Georgia trip has tested my angling skills and knowledge and Resolve, I tell you what. Oh, that's so sick, but let's uh, real quick put a TO, see what we're running with, because uh, yeah, it's a cheeky little rig, and I'm glad we're finally finding some success on it. So with my complete lack of experience here in Georgia and the East Coast in general, I like to go with five weights. They are a good up and down ride, and what I mean by that is that you can fish small water like this, 
with a five weight and you can also fish big water like we've been doing kind of bouncing around throughout this entire trip you've seen me fish really really big water and then really teeny tiny water so five weights are doing me good there and what I've got on this rod in particular is a dry dropper but not just any dry dropper this is an adjustable dry dropper rig and what I mean by that is my dry fly here it moves up and down my line at will so I can move it up and down and you can still catch fish with the sucker. I've got all the videos of me tying, well, this fly, like the concept itself and how to rig it, blah, blah. It's all linked down below, but then also how to tie this specific fly, because it's a sexy little number and I've actually caught eight fish on it this trip and had multiple bites. It's a, it's a cool fly, but regardless, it's adjustable. And that's key, especially as we move up and down these kind of riffle run pattern style streams you gotta be able to adjust for depth, and that's key. But what we got that fish on was this really nice copper john. And like a lot of the flies that I like to run, this is not a traditional copper john. I've gotten rid of the goose bite, used some rubber legs for the tail, and I also got some sparkly, hackly stuff coming off of it. It's a weird variant, but what's key is that it's tungsten, so that it's heavy, and also it's got that 60 degree hook bend, so that usually, well, usually, that hook is riding up, especially in this more rocky freestone environment, I don't want to get caught up if my hook's riding down. I want that to ride up, so it just kind of bounces off those rocks. So that is the rig, folks, and it's uh, whew, finding finding fish, and that's all I care about, man. Golly. Well, let's keep running up, see if we can't find a few more just like that one. Now I've heard a lot of rumors about a North Georgia super stalker, but never a stubby stalker. This boy is missing fins left, right, and center. He's a little worse for wear, but I'm very glad he ate my Copper John. So we're gonna say thank you, sir. And let him back. See you, stubby. Is that our fourth fish? Are we are we on to something? <laughs> is the evening bite started? <laughs> See ya, buddy. With that last little guy back home, safe and sound, I figured we might as well do the same. It was time for us to head home. So I crunched my way through this really cool campsite, headed to the main road and back to the truck. I figured there was no point in running it sun up to sundown, especially since we had one more day left of this trip. Well, the number five seems to be our lucky number here in Georgia. Call five today. Five the day before that, and then five the day before that. So, you know, ending with fish is a blessing because I'll tell you what, it started out really, really rough. And getting out of Blue Ridge, that was kind of the key. We, we just kind of needed to find new water in this, I guess, Bear Creek system, whatever it is. It's just a little sliver of public surrounded by private, and then it jumps way into the national forest. So I kind of caught it in the beginning, and man, we found some wild rainbows, which was so, so nice. But I think this entire, I guess, series or trip so far can be a testament to planning wisely. And what I mean by that is seasons. So right now, pretty much anywhere you go, it's not the best time for trout. You know, out west, everything's cold. And then east here, I'm kind of finding out in reports from my buddies as well that the leaves and the recent storms and kind of the up and down weather patterns are really causing some issue with the fish. So kind of why we've been grinding through. But again, that's purely on the fish side of things. I think it's also important to take opportunity when it comes. And yeah, if you have the chance to go see a new part of the country, do it. And I'm, I'm, I'm sighing. I've got a little bit of relief as we've caught some fish, but at the same time, bouncing around from Blue Ridge and all over Northern Georgia, it has been so amazing to just, yeah, see not only the scenery, but also like 
the little shops and the, the restaurants, the gas stations even, everything's just a little bit different in the way the roads work. It's just, it's so cool and it, it just broadens your horizon. You can kind of understand people better, I guess. And I know that's kind of a, that's kind of a reach when I'm just out here fishing, but still it, it does kind of uh, fall into the category of, you know, the, the, the trip as a, as a whole. But yeah, folks, I think right now I've got to get broken down. Tomorrow is our last day here in Georgia. I'm going to try, do some research tonight. I think I know where I'm going to go, but I'm going to try and get prepped and ready now. And then, yeah, head there while we still got some light. It's just after 4 o'clock, and that sun's going to be setting soon. So, you know the deal. we got to <laughs> make hay while the sun shines, get some drive time before those deer start coming out, and yeah, it'll be good. But folks, for those of you who have stuck around for this North Georgia series, I appreciate it so much. Seriously, the way this channel's been growing, it is... It's insane to me, and it's so cool that you guys enjoy following me along in these adventures, however haphazard they might be, and yeah, it's just, it's so cool. So, all the liking and commenting and sharing and subscribing that you do all goes into this weird algorithm thing, and I don't understand it, I don't know if anyone really does, but it helps, and it helps this channel grow and get kind of out there more. And Seriously, it's amazing to me how like every single day I get a message from somebody like, oh my gosh, just found the channel, or oh my gosh, this is my new favorite channel, binging your con. It's like the strangest thing to, I don't know how to, regardless, thank you so much for your support, and it, again, it really does mean a lot, but as always, we've got the mainstay three, we're talking the Discord, Instagram, and Patreon, especially Patreon. This is kind of one of those trips, this is the, the, the first of many, hopefully, trips that is helped, like, funded by the Patreon. So, I know I leave, you know, the names and the, the, the text in the back of the videos, but I just gotta say it now, all you Patreon folk, thank you so much. You're kind of the reason that I'm out here right now, <laughs> so that's so awesome. And then, kind of something new is the website so if you want to go check out some of my angler logs and other fishy related articles i've got some stuff over there as long as you know the videos and the community page a lot of good stuff going on over there so definitely go check out the website tippity type flyallseason.com and my little mug ought to show up and last but not least the three supporters the mainstays of fly all season we've got the dry fly society hex and ant they're helping me out so if you want to go check out their products, I like them a lot, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't push this on you if I didn't trust in them myself. But they've got some cool stuff, both gear and apparel. And yeah, use my promo code down below, and it'll get you a little, a little cheeky percent off, and it helps them and it helps me. So, folks, with that, I just gotta say, wherever you find yourself, be it in North Georgia in the middle of winter, <laughs> or in your backyard. We sure hope you're keeping those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. Oh, did you think this episode was over? <laughs> yeah, so did I. Nope, it's day five, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you, day five. Day five was going to be the grimiest grinder grind of them all. And I went after it anyway. <laughs> in true ironic fashion, we got absolutely skunked on the very same river that we started this entire trip off in. But instead of being on the lower, bigger sections, we were all the way up in the high headwater streams. And let me tell you, there was a very similar uh, absence of trout. Now I couldn't blame that on the otters this time. This was probably my own fault. So I'm gonna put a nice bow on this entire Georgia trip right now by just saying, thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this series. I sure had a lot of fun filming it, and I'm sure, I'm hoping you guys learned something. There's a lot of content here, a lot of uh, nuanced things with a new part of the country, and hey, I'm just glad I could have been out there doing it. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.